I think I might have slightly overdone it on the whiting out lights. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you think I'm just too... Oh, God. God. Now my tripod's going down. Right. So I want to do... I know it's late. But I want to do a short live all about my top six self-help books of all time. Because asked me what my top were or we got into a conversation about it so I said I would do a live so here I am I know it's quite late but I hope this serves you and I'm gonna talk about self-help books because I'm calling in that I know it's a bit of an old-fashioned term to use but another way of referring to them is personal development books and it's been an incredibly incredibly important incredibly I cannot emphasize how important books have been to my personal development journey which started three years ago last year in 2018 I read 54 books so more than one a week and I always listen to them I have no time for sitting around reading a book I don't know about you guys maybe you it's an important part of your life but for me it's all about the doubling up and using my time as wisely as possible. So I have a long commute and I, I literally, I obsessively listen to it whenever I can. Like the only time I'm, I'm not doing something and also listening to a personal development book is if I'm in the shower, cause I can't hear it. But every, like if I'm folding the clothes, cooking, you know, cleaning, whatever it might be, I'm all over these books and I freaking love it. And just one more thing I'd say about, before I move on to my top six, is that if you guys ever struggle with transition moments, so if you are getting a bit stuck in procrastination between, you know, the doing of the dinner and then the putting the kids down for bed, or you are sort of, you're trying to get up off the sofa to do something to work on your business of an evening and you're struggling with that moment and you just are stuck in procrastination, stuck on your Facebook, whatever, then audiobooks are great for that because they kind of feel worthy, but they also feel juicy as well. So I, if I'm ever like, oh, you know, I find myself going around the same apps and then I'm like, God, I'm just blatantly procrastinating. I click onto the Audible app listen to that and it transitions me nicely. Come on, come on, come on Miranda, out you come, up you come. Okay, so let me just intro these six books by saying that the kind of books I read are primarily state books. What do I mean by that? So Tony Robbins makes this distinction between state and strategy. So we in business, we all think that what's stopping us and holding us back in business is strategy. Oh, we haven't quite done the right training course or we haven't quite mastered marketing and we think it's strategy that is our problem but success in business is 80 percent state and psychology mindset and only 20 percent strategy you know what to do you just ain't battery issues you know what to do you just ain't implementing it because you've got mindset issues for example you've got a story about yourself not being business minded or you're procrastinating because you actually don't feel very worthy and you feel like if you show up to your marketing then people will reject you so for example tonight I had it in my mind I was going to do a live and then I normally try and do my lives at, at the moment at 10 o'clock as soon as Love Island finishes <laughs> but I was let, let it drag on, let it drag on. And then I thought, no, fuck it. Like, I'm going to do it because I said I was going to do it. So that's me, even though I had a moment of self-doubt thinking, oh, everyone's going to be in bed. I'm like, I don't fucking care because actually the outcome of this live that I'm doing now, my main outcome is to serve you guys and hopefully change things for you. But also it's about me being personally powerful. I said I would do it in my own head to myself. So I'm going to fucking do it even if none of y'all watch. So... That's an example of a state issue and why I mostly listen to state books. But of my six, top six books I've had that had the biggest impact on me, th two of them are strategy books and four are state books. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna, not, not, no particular order, but the last two will be the two that had the biggest impact on me. And interestingly, actually no, they are the two books out of my six that interestingly had the biggest impact on you. So I obviously recommend books a lot and I'll only recommend books that are the complete shizzle. And there are two books at the end of this list that are the shizzle and that they, the one of them impacted the most number of people were in terms of volume. So the most number of you were like, oh my God, that book is amazing. It really, really helped me. And they mention it quite frequently. And then the other book is mentioned slightly less frequently, but it went deeper. So it affected more of y'all 
on a deeper level. Like people say to me about this book that I'm gonna tell you at the end, right at the end, that it changed their life. So listen up. Okay, this is gonna be quite a quick live. I don't wanna go on and on because it's late. So my top six self-help books, personal development books, whatever you wanna call them of all time. So I'm gonna start with a, a strategy book. Let's just go for it for a strategy book. And it's Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk's Crushing It. Now, this guy is a complete legend. You can just follow him on any social media and you'll be so inspired and he kind of kicks your ass. He's quite masculine, that's the only thing. Sometimes I'm a bit like, oh God, you know, put your testosterone away, Gary, you know, for my liking a little bit sometimes. And he's very shouty, but you know, he's, and he's like got a potty mouth like me, but he, he speaks a lot of sense. He's very intelligent and he's like, things like Tim is very first principles thinking. And his book, Crushing It, is all about perfect, amazing, real life examples of marketing, the new marketing, which is the kind of, I guess you could call this marketing. I'm trying to market to you an idea. So this is what I'm doing. I'm very much doing the crushing it philosophy. And he basically says that you need to stop thinking, right, I am an expert. I need to write a blog, an expert blog or whatever, or I need to do a perfect video and put it onto my website. He's like, no, fuck that shit. You need to get down and dirty in the trenches with your customers and you need to really get to understand them and speak on their level in the places that they're congregating, not on some perfect corporate video, you know, on your website where nowhere goes. It's all about social media. It's all about keeping things raw, keeping things rough and keeping things connected with what people actually want. So an example is tonight I read the Aesthetics Journal and I was, sorry, but this is a little bit dodgy of me because I don't want to come across as criticizing a, a colleague, but I am going to criticize a colleague. So there's an article in the Aesthetics Journal that just landed in my doorstep tonight about complaints management. And I'm sure this woman who wrote it is like a brilliant, you know, professional, but oh my God, like there's nothing in there about empathy. She's literally talking about, she's, she kind of fits that old marketing model of like, oh, you know, what? that's the five steps of complaints handling. Make sure your photos are right, your consent forms and stuff. Sorry, I'm taking the piss now. I don't mean to take the piss. You know, she's like very old school. Whereas what I tell you is the from the front line, how to actually deal with a complaint and get a good result. So my style is much more crushing it style, which this book is all about marketing. It's all about how to do it and actually succeed in it and get great results and change people's lives with it. So there's brilliant examples from real life situations, you know, single-handed businesses, crushing it uh, and knocking it out of the park. So I'd really, really recommend Gary Vaynerchuk, crushing it go get it i have no hesitation you will freaking love it and you need more marketing in your life we all need to do more marketing he has a slight essence of mindset as well um although his answer to mindset is basically just just do it which i don't really agree with because that ain't gonna move anyone but certainly his strategy stuff is awesome okay the next book that i'm going to recommend is a complete departure from gary v and um sorry just let me just bear with just let me okay so this is on the scale, the, the personal development scale, it's at the more woo-woo end of the personal development scale. So often when I'm introducing people to personal development books, I, I'm very careful to maybe give them a um, recommend a book that's been done by a social scientist like Amy Cuddy or someone who's had a TED talk like Brene Brown or, you know, someone who's done some, some, some research. But this is not that, okay? And it's from someone who actually believes in the law of attraction. And so she's all about manifesting. Now, I, um, I, I, I'm not there, okay, with, with, I don't, you know, the secret, I, I believe the secret, but I think it's only because of a reticular, our reticular activating system. That's a whole other story. I'm not going to get drawn into a debate about the secret. But this woman, Denise Duffield Thomas, Denise Duffield Thomas, she is into my, like, majorly, majorly into manifesting and into the law of attraction. But even though that's kind of not my jam, this book is freaking amazing and it's called Get Rich Lucky Bitch. Now, before you switch off and think, oh, Miranda, you, I thought you were a nice person. And now you, I, I hear that you've been reading this book, Get Rich Lucky Bitch. Hold your judgment, sister, because if you are making those kinds of judgments, then that is going to impact your business 
negatively. If you think it's bad that I read a book and I'm recommending a book called Get Rich Lucky Bitch to you, then that means that you've got some, oh, some of your own money mindset issues. Now, don't get me wrong. I came from a Guardian reading, public sector job environment growing up, you know, profit wasn't the favourite word in our house and, you know, bankers are bad and, you know, all the rest of it. And so, you know, very left wing and everything. And so the idea of getting rich was literally like dirty. You would never want to get rich. You know, that's that's awful. If you get rich, someone else gets poor was the kind of like the vibe I think that many of us have grown up with or whatever, for whatever reason. But what I love about this book, Get Rich Lucky Bitch from Denise Duffield Thomas, is that she basically hanging out with her for the time, you know, the seven hours or whatever I was able to listen to her on the audiobook. I was like, oh my God, like it really influenced me. I was like, wow, like I need to hang out with more people like this who think it's okay to want to improve yourself and think it's okay to actually pick out your money mindset issues and actually do something about them. Now your money mindset issues might be like mine in that thinking that profit is bad or they might manifest in other ways, thinking that you aren't worthy of money. Maybe you grow up in poverty and, you know, you think that people who are rich, you know, are kind of horrible or something because maybe you had like a rich auntie who is horrible to you or whatever. There's so many different, or, or you don't deserve to have money and then you end up self-sabotaging and spending your money in, in weird ways. Whatever your mindset issues, your money mindset issues are, dude, you're in business now. You need to get rid of your money mindset issues. You need to be free and happy to ask for money and to sell because this, and this is a big, 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 big transition for me. I cannot tell you, and it's happening every single day. The way that my mind is changing to think that what I, to know that what I have to give in the world, what I have to sell, and obviously, you know, there's a few different things I sell, is fucking changing people's lives. So yeah, I'm going to sell, you know? And that is like the opposite of how I used to be. I used to avoid selling. I used to think salespeople were dirty. I used to think, you know, people are going to hate me and reject me and whatever. So that's an example of a money mindset issue that if you don't, if you don't clear down your money mindset issues and she uses forgiveness as one of her tools, then it will come back to bite you in your business. It will manifest negatively in your business. So you really, really, really need to dig, dig into that. So I really recommend that one as well. Denise Duffield Thomas, Get Rich Lucky Bitch. And, you know, download it on Audible. She's really entertaining. Okay. Next one is another strategy book. And this is quite left field. This isn't even on Audible. That's how kind of niche it is. But I had it when I was going through a phase of, um, before I got onto Audible, I had it, had it on a CD in my car. My car still has a CD player. And so this book is called Never Split the Difference. And it's by Chris Voss, V-O-S-S, Never Split the Difference. And it's basically a strategy book all about how to negotiate better. She might be a bit like, all right, all right, cool. Okay, it sounds a bit businessy. That's cool, Miranda. But what? do you really have to negotiate all that much? And the answer is no. You know, I'm not in loads of negotiations in my business, not at all. But what negotiation skills teach you is this. And this is, oh my God, I use this every single day. And it's been so impactful on me. The way that Chris Voss teaches negotiation skills is through tactical empathy. So in other words, if you want to negotiate and get the best out of a negotiation or, you know, with your partner, with your child, you know, with a salon, um, you know, with a client who's complained or someone who's trying to get a package out of you or something like that. And it doesn't quite match with how much you would like to charge. So there are loads of examples of negotiation, even if you wouldn't label it like that. If you want to get the best out of it for you and your business, then you need to demonstrate tactical empathy. You truly need to understand the other person's position or else you can't basically influence them. And if you don't understand their position and aren't deeply empathetic with them, then they aren't, they aren't going to sense that and they're not going to be on your side. And this guy, Chris Voss, is so freaking entertaining this book because he was the chief negotiator for the FBI for hostages. So he literally has all these amazing hostage situations that he describes. So the one that stuck out for me was this 
awful Malaysian terrorist who was holding a an American uh, citizen or, or someone, maybe a diplomat, I can't remember, but it was American. And the, they were demanding six million dollars, uh, ten million dollars, uh, or else, you know, he was going to get it. And actually, they had a long history of killing hostages. So it wasn't, they weren't messing around. And Chris Voss, who's, who's written this book, he negotiated them from right down to zero and getting the guy back. And he did that through recognising their position. Literally, it's as mind-blowing as that. This guy, who was like a complete psychopath, went from literally demanding £10 million to handing over this American back and not having a penny from the Americans simply on the basis that he got him and his cause for his this his, his colleagues who were like thought of themselves as freedom fighters they got acknowledged that's the power of it so you do not know how many times you need to use empathy in your life and there's no getting around it if you want to influence people it sounds a bit kind of harsh but you know we are all trying to influence each other aren't we if you want to influence your kids your partner you know your business associates your clients you need to demonstrate empathy and the reason he calls it tactical empathy is because sometimes when you have an adversary 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 and you want to and you actually don't like them you might be like well i don't want to empathize with them so then you think of it as in it's tactical empathy you're doing it so that you can get a result really recommend that deeply entertaining bit left field never split the difference by chris voss okay now we're gonna oh this is the only book that i actually have in physical form so I'm going to get it out. Tim bought this book a while ago, but I haven't read the physical form one. I've only done the Audible. And it is Mindset by Carol Dweck. Now, this book is, I think it's sort of 10 years old, something like that. And I think that the whole reason, sorry, I was reading Teresa's comment, the whole reason that people use this word mindset so much, and it's obviously the word is in my group, uh, Medical Ethics Mindset Warriors, is because of this book. It was really, really formative. And it's all, it's at the less woo-woo end. And it's all, it's a, uh, Carol Dweck is a social scientist. She's a psychologist at Harvard. And she's done, you know, decades of study. And what she found is that there are, people have two types of mindset. Either they have a growth mindset or they have a fixed mindset. Now, Tim has an uber growth mindset. I'll come on to that. And I have, you know, to be honest, struggled with a fixed mindset. And I'm breaking it up every single day. And people with a fixed mindset, the problem is that we think that we come out of the womb with a particular talent or we don't have that talent. So you can imagine if you think that you either don't have or you have a talent that's naturally in your genes and in your bones, then you ain't going to want to try and risk, you know, trying to thrive in your business when your business requires you to do many things, you know, be good at marketing, be good at strategy, be good at, you know, relationships, be good at injecting, be good at money, whatever. You aren't good. If you think you're, if you, if your maths teacher told you in a, some horrible incident when you were 13, shaming you in front of everyone else that you are bad at maths and now you have a fixed mindset around that and you do not think that you can actually get all that much better at maths, then can you imagine how much that's going to damage you? You aren't going to try and negotiate with that client because you're like, oh my God, maths, maths, math, alarm, alarm. Or you're going to have labels for yourself like, I'm not business minded. And the strongest force in the human personality is the need to stay consistent with your identity. So whatever you, whatever comes after the words I am is where you'll end up. So if you think that you are not business minded, which is a fixed mindset, then you'll end up there. You'll end up creating that reality for yourself. Whereas if you think you are really good at caring for people, which I'm sure many of you do, then you'll always end up being really caring. And it's amazing to be caring. It's vitally important, but sometimes you need to also need to set boundaries with people. So you need to be get better at setting boundaries instead of saying, I don't like confrontation. I'm rubbish at confrontation. <laughs> Fixed mindset. You need to basically believe, not believe in yourself, but you need to believe in your power to grow in your ability to grow and she literally found like in all her studies that you know people who have a growth mindset just thrive so much because they think to themselves oh well i don't know how to do this now but i'll just learn like literally tim like, that's what he thinks he's like oh yeah you know like he this shed which is incredibly long that i'm in he literally built it from scratch no kit no nothing i said to him one day how did you know how to build that and he was like 
it's just the principles of engineering. I was like, where did you learn the principles of engineering? He just taught himself. He literally just comes in into a new environment and just teaches himself stuff. That's a growth mindset. He doesn't feel he has anything to lose by trying. And one final example I'll give you about the power of this book. It re I only read it recently and it really changed me. Is when, I don't know whether you guys have ever had experience maybe with your, with your son or daughter or someone close to you who has been labelled as gifted as a child. Now, this is a very tricky label, she says, Carol Dweck says, because if it's OK if you, you know, you think you're gifted and then you rock out and carry on with your gifted life and you're great academically and you carry. But the big problem with labelling someone gifted is now they've got something to lose. So if they get a sniff that they. So I remember when I went to uni, I came from an environment where you know, yeah, I'm intelligent and, you know, um, you know, I came from a, an academic background. My parents are teachers, but when I, I never had any major, like, I didn't think I was the big I am intellectually. So I arrived at uni and I was like, yeah, cool. You know, did, my, did quite well on my A-levels, you know, like, I, I, I'm looking forward to the next challenge. Whereas many of my friends came from like, you know, private schools and they've been labeled as gifted and now they're in the big wide world. They're now a little fish in a big pond instead of a big fish in a little pond, which is the way we were at school. And now I remember them saying, oh my God, I've come to uni and I'm like, oh my God, I'm no longer this big fish and I feel shit. So they had lost their identity as the gifted one. And that can be treacherous because if you have an identity around something and then you lose it, it actually there's a mild trauma that exists there. And you can often just step off the train and think, do you know what? I'm not even going to try this anymore. You know, and people find this, we, we find this with filler complications. So sometimes people will have a complication and they're like, dude, I'm getting off this train. I'm clearly not good at filler. You know, I had this terrible occlusion or someone, you know, tried to sue me or whatever. And that's, that trauma makes you believe that it's you that's the problem. You are the one who's naturally came out of the womb not being very good at injecting filler. Whereas actually in fact, if you think about it, yeah, you've had a knockback, but you need to believe in your ability to grow. If you believe in your ability to grow and you have this growth mindset, pff, the world is your oyster. There are very famous people with growth mindsets like Steve Jobs and, you know, uh, Bill Gates and Tim. So that's an amazing book. I'd really recommend that. Only thing I'd say about that is it's quite dry. Uh, so perhaps don't start there, um, kind of build up to it. But um, super, super, super breakthrough for me. OK, so I've done the two state strategy books, which was um, the Gary Vee book, um, uh, Crushing It. Totally recommend that. That's so applicable to all of us marketeers. And uh, then we had the state, the, uh, the other strategy book, which was Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. Then we had Denise Duffield Thomas, Get Rich Lucky Bitch. Oh my God, fucking get that book, guys. You all, I promise you, I'm sure all of you have money mindset issues and that won't be serving you in your business. It'll be showing up in kind of messed up ways. And so I have, which one have I done? And then I did, and then I did Mindset by Carol Dweck. Okay, I think that's four. So my final two recommendations are the top two. The first book is The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. And this book, oh, above all the other books, is the one that I recommend the most. And that has the biggest number of people coming back to me and saying, wow, that was a real game changer for me. It really gets me up in the morning. And this is what Mel Robbins' Five Second Rule is all about. It's all about procrastination. And what I love is that she's shining a light on it this idea that we don't feel worthy and so we don't take action. And procrastination, let me just tell you right here, right now, is not laziness. I mean, maybe in your teenage son, maybe it's a bit of laziness, but you, you aren't lazy. Stop telling yourself that is so not helpful. You are in fear. The reason you're stuck on the sofa watching Netflix of an evening or not going to bed because you're kind of weirdly procrastinating going to bed or, you know, you're the, the one that I always joke about is when I'm I open the dryer, the tumble dryer, and I'm going to get the clothes out. And I'm supposed to kind of fold them and take them to the next stage. What do I find myself doing? I mean, not so much anymore, but I find myself peeling off the dust from the filter of the dryer like anything you know sort your cd collection out into alphabetical order you know whatever it is whatever bullshit you're doing to procrastinate she acknowledges and shines a light mel robbins on the idea that actually you're in fear and you need to come out of it or else you ain't connecting with your best self anytime soon and achieving your goals and the way that it's a very practical book as well as incredibly entertaining. She's so good at writing and, and at speaking. She's one of the, the top motivational speakers in the world. And so I really recommend getting the audible version of it. The, basically, 
she has this this technique which is that you count back five four three two one and go it sounds super simple and you're like dude how is she stretching a whole book out with that one little concept but there's loads of science behind it and there's an amazing story she's a great storyteller and it really kind of gets you that was the book that got me not snoozing so i don't snooze anymore um you know what i mean like snooze the set the snooze button after i wake up i don't do that anymore and that was the book that kept me doing now it was me i don't i don't use the five second rule anymore because I don't need it, because I kind of got into a new pattern and I'm very connected with my why, why I want to get up early in the morning. Or not early, but why I want to get up and not snooze. So I kind of have carried on her legacy, but I would really, really recommend the book because it's so entertaining and it really will give you that that boost. Um, The only slight caution I would say is, if you read that book, don't think it's going to be a panacea. I worry a bit sometimes with these very simple strategies that people kind of, it's great and people, I'm sure, you know, she sold gazillions of copies because it seems so simple. But sometimes it can create like a high because you're like, oh my God, it was just this thing. If only I'd known this thing all along then I would be rocking, rocking my business. It's not just that thing. You know, and you know, I don't know anyone who's kind of still using it after months, but the whole point is you don't need to because now you have a new pattern because you use the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, do it. You use that a certain number of times and now you're still implementing. So that's the power of it. And my final book, the final and probably most impactful, good job because my battery is about to die. The most impactful in terms of life changing books on maybe weirdly not me but on certainly on you guys is not actually a book at all it's a lecture series so it's only on audible and if you want to get audible then you get a free trial and then also on audible a couple of little tips about audible so here's some tips on audible you can increase the speed so you can listen to it more quickly i only do that with strategy books not state books second thing is you can get refunds on Audible, did you know that? So if your book is shit, there's a certain number, they don't tell you how many, but you can do it by the, via a web browser, you can't do it via the app, but go and get a refund if you don't like a book. So don't, you can sort of just buy books a bit more readily now and not worry too much. And another tip I say about Audible is, um, ba, 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 can't remember that final tip. Oh yeah, you can, if you, if you, I, can send people so if you want to inbox me if you've already had your free trial i can send you a freebie you can only have one freebie ever but if you like any of these books and you want me to recommend them apart from chris voss's book which is not an audible then let me know and if you inbox me i should be able to whatsapp you if you send me a mobile number i can whatsapp you with this freebie so if you've already had your free trial you can get one of these books for free winning um Make sure you choose wisely because it's only you only get one. So those are my little tips for Audible. And the final book is Brene Brown, The Power of Vulnerability. Oh my God, what can you say about Brene Brown? She's a social scientist in America and she is basically a social worker by trade. And she does the kind of research that is very qualitative. And she does deep research interviews with individuals. And it's all about vulnerability and shame. So what you're going to get from this book is like a massive hug, but a hug from a wise auntie, you know, not a hug from someone who's just a cheerleader. And she digs into basically worthiness. That's what it's all about. It's about how we feel, feel how shame comes into us from external forces in childhood or even now and how we shame ourselves and how you can overcome that, the tools. She's the most beautiful storyteller and some of the best quotes that I use on a daily basis come from her like people are hard to hate close up move in or another quote which I love which is feel the discomfort now instead of the resentment later um there are so many quotes that I just love from Brene Brown and it's all because she is showing you how to connect with your worthiness by telling you stories about how the layers of shame got loaded on you and actually the greatest tool that you could employ is vulnerability and this is what I do day in day out on my content I am so freaking vulnerable and it's why you guys are probably drawn to me because you know I'm telling the truth and you know that I won't bullshit because I'm vulnerable and I understand the power of my vulnerability I understand that it it creates connections and my authenticity again creates trust 
So listen to that book. It will be a warm, beautiful hug. It'll make you connect with how you can dig into your worthiness and stop shaming yourself and others and or being shamed. And it will give you the permission to be vulnerable. And I don't mean, you know, like just going onto a Facebook Live and getting naked or, you know, telling everyone, you know, getting pissed and doing a Facebook Live and saying, I fucking hate you, I fucking hate you. No, it's about doing it responsibly and doing it in a way that will serve you. But honestly, guys, vulnerability is where it's at. And I have had nothing but good for my vulnerability. All of my lives, you know, either get interrupted by a kid or, you know, I get my lighting wrong and I joke about it, whatever. They're all super vulnerable. And guess what? As a result, I get high watch numbers and I get, you know, lots of trust. And you guys are more likely to be changed by my ideas because you know that I'm willing to be vulnerable and I'm not bullshitting your ass. So if I had to sort of put them into an order... I'd say power of vulnerability. Then I'd probably say crushing it from Gary Vee. Then I'd say Denise Duffield Thomas, get rich, lucky bitch. Then I would probably say um, um, the five second rule, Mary Robbins. Then Brene, uh, then uh, mindset by Carol Dweck. No, actually, I'd say the I'd say um, the negotiation book, never split the difference, and then maybe mindset at the end, just because it's quite sort of a little bit on the dry side. But I hope it's been useful, my love. Now we are in we are in control and a big part of that is having a friend in the form of audible so i hope you find that these books serve you my loves and please 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 let me know how you get on with them and share this share this maybe tag someone i can't normally say this because i'm normally in the group but this is my page so yeah share it would be amazing if you would i would very much appreciate that or tag a friend who loves a good audiobook or book all right darlings take care